Hi everyone. So I I belong to the Peruvian Labs group in uh, NYU Abu Dhabi, and uh, we study date palms and wild relatives. And today I will speak about uh, some the recombination landscape uh, across the palm genome and uh, how we are dealing to get there uh, to get uh, ultimately a recombination map and uh, something that should be profitable to use uh, uh, in breeding in the future and something that we will would like to happily would like to deliver to the date palm uh, community as a genomic uh, point of view as a evolution evolutionary studies point of view and also for the breeders and uh, which has a great impact in uh, in this area of the world. So as John said, uh, date palm is actually an iconic um, a species uh, uh, around the Middle East and North Afri Africa. And um, uh, I will not go in deep in the botanical aspects of, of date palm, but let me say that it's a dioecious species. So we have uh, clearly male and um, uh, female flowers and uh, well, of course we need like uh, the male to pollinate the, the female and this is well controlled uh, since centuries um, although uh, in terms of genomic aspects in, uh, in this era that uh, this genomic era uh, there is not so much about traits and gene association uh, and our group started some years ago to um, to perform and to deliver to, to the community uh, some genomic uh, tools. As, so we, we started some, some years ago to, to, to study ge uh, the genomics of date palm and also wild relatives. Uh, so the Phoenix uh, genus is composed uh, about uh, 12, 13 uh, species. There is one species that it's not uh, well defined if it's another species or, or not. And um, we were very interested on all these species, and we start a broad project to do genome reference uh, gen uh, gen genome references for all these species. And of course, we start with, with date palm. Um, so the, the ultimately goal of um, of, of these, uh, these these studies was to start comparative genomics with date palm and wild relatives. Uh, so. The basics of comparative comparative genomics uh, uh, it's like to explore the synteny and collinearity uh, of, of these species, and we hope that from from the from the, this uh, information we can retrieve valuable uh, valuable experts to um, to to implement in date palm crop improvement in. In an evolutionary framework, framework or a point of view, it allows the re reconstruction of ancestral genomes, uh, also to clearly identify the phylogenetic um, evolution, and um, to understand patterns of natural selection, domestication, and um, predict also common genes, and to select uh, important genes uh, among these species, and uh, for example, we, you, we can imagine, uh, of course, that date palm is already a species that it is very well adapted to extreme conditions in terms of uh, temperature and salinity. But of course, there there, there are traits uh, in uh, close egg species that are very important and can be uh, actually imported in a way in the future in the breeding process. Uh, by a genomic uh, breeding technique or even like uh, the most traditional breeding te techniques. Uh, in terms of evolution also, our, it's, imp uh, it's important to say that uh, these species, they evolve together and uh, they, they are really promiscuous, so they can actually uh, have uh, progeny from uh, closer related species, so and the level of integration uh, or hybridization is quite quite high and is quite common. And we also we are from the beginning we were also very interesting on uh, to, to to study at the genome level 
the levels of integration across these species and how the, the gene flow w was then across these species and during the time, the time of uh, evolution. So this is basically the, the main goals of, uh, of the, this, this work that I'm presenting here. And um, when we start this, we didn't have anything in terms of genomic tools. So we, we start first to, to deliver um, uh, a, a, a genome uh, for for the, for date palm, and uh, we wanted to produce a high quality reference genome uh, based first on on date palm and then for the another species, and of course uh, we started with the idea also that uh, further than that that just a, a genome we we wanted to probably want to explore uh, the recombination landscape acro across. Uh, the genome, which is very important in terms of breeding techniques and also in terms of this uh, integra integration analysis to find what are the, pro the parts of the, the chromosomes or even all of the genomes uh, of, uh, that are uh, characterized by hot spots or, or uh, cold spots of these uh, hybridization events. Uh, so, what I, I, I'm, I'm presenting today is how we get there and how we started. So we started to, 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 to deliver a very good genome back on 2019. Uh, that uh, back on the times they were available um, like four at the, in the literature for uh, genome references for date palm. However, they were not good enough to, to perform even good uh, GWAS studies, and uh, what we did back on the time was uh, based on uh, the advance of uh, NGS sequencing. We used for the first time long reads to do a better genome, and we were able to, 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 to deliver to, to the community uh, a new genome that uh, was quite good and was covering uh, about uh, Eight, uh, seven to seventy-five percent of the the whole genome of date palm, and uh, the N50 back on the time was quite good, was like about five megabases, and uh, for uh, so we are we are talking about uh, a genome that for that is not too large. Uh, however, on trees and mostly in date palm, the problem. Uh, in, on, on the assembly of these genomes is the, the, number, the number of heterozygotes, so the heterozygote level, and also uh, more and more uh, the problem on, on these species, we are seeing that the problem of structural, structural variants, they happen a lot between, among, um, among individuals. So it's always a challenge to produce a good reference genome. Um, Back on the time, we had the, this notion, even that uh, this, this genome was quite good, uh, and since, uh, since like in the last 10 years, let's say, the NGS platforms, they advanced a lot, we were able to uh, make use, uh, all, let's say, the all different data that was available, and we were able to to perform uh, long read, link reads, so short reads, even IC, uh, pr to perform uh, IC data to, 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 to construct optical maps and um, for date palm. And um, in the end, all this data was, uh, was assembled together. And uh, we right now are, uh, are in, in a situation that we where uh, we, we are able to, let's say, li li uh, lift up the, this new genome to a new version and uh, making, use, uh, making full use of all this data. And uh, we are delivering in the next month a new reference genome for, for date palm, doing uh, very intensive and very optimize uh, description uh, in terms of uh, genome content uh, on date palm. So basically, uh, what, what we did was uh, to use uh, the long reads as a basis to, to produce the genome. Then, then we, we used um, 
assemblers to to, to assemble the a, a first uh, genome contig based genome then we polished and then we used mostly optical maps and uh, IC data to to do the, the scaffolding and we we hand with a high quality genome assembly that uh, based at, at, in the first uh, step, just in optical map maps for the scaff scaffolding part, not in the IC data. And uh, as you can see, we were able to produce um, a, a, g a genome reference that is uh, explained just with 88 scaffolds and with uh, N50 of uh, 30 megabases. And here you can see on this graph, so each step could, uh, should be one scaffold that stands for each of each chromosome. And you can see here that uh, we, we are speaking already about uh, a genome reference at scaffold level. So we can actually assemble full chromosomes just by, by this approach. And um, let's say that 85% of the genome is completely resolved. And there are parts that we cannot assemble together. However, we know exactly what is the sequence. We just know, don't know what is the order uh, in, in, within the, the genome. So comparing with, uh, with the, the previous version that I, I called here version one and version, version two, we see a clearly improvement. And this, it will be the basis for a comparative genomic study. So this will be the, the genome that uh, will be the, the core for uh, satellite genomes, let's say the wild species genomes. Uh, of course, we cannot achieve the same, the, the same quality of these uh, uh, satellite genomes for another ones, but uh, the important one is the date palm. That is the basis that we want to improve in the future uh, in terms of crop uh, and in terms of uh, breeding. Uh, so we, 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 we spend, let's say, quite a time to, to do this because it's the core uh, in terms of uh, bioinformatics and uh, even uh, molecular biology in our days, toolkits for these breeding techniques. So as I was saying, uh, we were uh, quite confident that uh, this will be in the future a reference genome for all the, the community in the in, in the in the or in the palm community for scientific studies and uh, uh, and for the agriculture breeding uh, techniques that can result ultimately in the future from from this information uh, and. Uh, we also, back on the time, we also start to to saw that there were no, besides date palm is uh, quite interesting species in terms to study, there is not uh, very uh, advanced uh, genomic studies uh, in, in the literature. So we, we start to, to, to think, okay, let's, let's do a, uh, a study in terms of to understand what what is happening in terms of recombination in, in date palm, and uh, we and let's construct construct a, a genetic map. So back on the time there was in a this was some years ago and was made by our colleague uh, Khaled that is here. Uh, there there was a genetic map uh, that was uh, in the literature but was not very rich in in markers genetic map. So what Khaled did uh, was to cross a male with a female, um, a, a, a date palm male and a date palm female, and he produced uh, about 419 um, siblings, and these siblings were all sequenced, and uh, the, the parents were sequenced with eye coverage, and then I joined the group and I was able to produce a, a pipeline to analyze uh, and to extract m these markers of uh, potential for recombination based on, uh, on, um, on, on SNP data calling. 
And I will not go in detail what I did in terms of this, this pipeline, but everyone that is interested on it, we can explore more uh, after the talk. And uh, the end result was quite good. We were able to, to, to produce a recombination, uh, a genetic map with uh, 18 major linkage groups that stand for the 18 chromosomes and five mineral leakage groups that were not able, that we were not able actually to anchor on the 18 major ones. And uh, we were able to identify uh, 30, about uh, 13,000 markers, which for a genetic map with the dimension of the, the, the date palm genome, uh, it's already considered high density in markers genetic map. So from there, so we were able to, to, to map these markers uh, in the, at the genome. And uh, for example, here is the representation of, of uh, uh, autosome uh, the, from the chromosome 12 that uh, it's, uh, it's well known to, to have the, the region for the sex determination in date palm. Uh, so uh, however, there is no yet no clearly evidence what are the genes that are uh, that are being uh, expressed to to determine the the sex in date palms. So this is quite a, the study that or the 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 base information that we 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 can use to to understand more and more these aspects in in, in date palm. And uh, of course. We had the markers and we were able to calculate the distance between these markers. Uh, so let's say the, the gene uh, distance across the chromosome uh, or across the whole genome. And from there, we were able to, to compare this uh, genetic distance with the physical distance from the chromosome and from uh, the genetic distance uh, and the physical distance comparison, we get this linear fu fu function that if we derivate, we can have what is called the local recombination rate, which give us at any point in the, in, in the genome, the recombination rate for that physical position. So in the end, we were able to generate a good genetic map and this recombination map. So the, the impact of this the, mostly of the recombination map, is that it will allow us as in the future to understand what are the hotspots across the genome that are more able or not to recombine, and also with another species, and to explain why uh, these species that are so close to each other and what are the, genomic, the genome dynamics across them and during evolution. So, at this point, we start to say, okay, everything, it, it's okay, let's go further and let's, let's investigate for it. Uh, however, let me say that uh, one critical aspect to, to, to perform this kind of studies in, in terms of recombination is actually uh, to, to know exactly what is the physical position at the genome. Because as you can see, one of the main, uh, main variables that influence like this local recombination rate, local recombination, local recombination rate, is the the physical position of the of the the markers. That stands for the orientation of the the genome reference. So, but what I want to say is like, no matter what you have. Um, a good genom genome reference. If you have like problems in small problems inside the genome, and if you are not locating very well the physical distance, all these let's say slopes will change will change dr dramatically. So, for example, what's happening in some of the chromosomes? So, which means like no matter what, we had like a very good genome in terms of. Uh, parameters like N50 and continuity, we started to go deep so deep that we started to see problems on it. So problems uh, uh, like uh, for the same physical position, we had like different or more than one genetic distances, which doesn't make sense at all. 
So for that, we we try to understand what what was uh, uh, happening here, and of course, uh, all these genome references that they have errors, and these have their errors, and most of them they they come in our days not from uh, the um, the linear uh, sequencing, uh, the the linear chain of, of of DNA. It comes from the the part that we assemble everything together from from the context that we get the assemblies, let's say, in a scaffolding part. So we try to, uh, to understand what is happening, what, what was the misinformation uh, on this scaffolding part that, we, that was based in optical maps. And uh, we, since we have another very good scaffolding data, that was IC data. So IC data gives, gives us the confirmation uh, ligation between any two nucleotides in general, what what is what is uh, in application? What we can do with this is to see what is the interaction of uh, all the parts of the DNA. Let's say if one 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 loci interacts with another, and if this loci interacts with this one, is because probably they are in the same chromosome. Let's say if you want to check for um, two chromosomes if they interact. We can I actually see by, by this data with these matrices. So what, what gives you see, what we, we can get from here, it's interaction mat matrices, and we, we can get uh, all the um, delegations or all the associations between two loci. And fr from here we can say, okay, this part of the genome that we are assembling, it's connected to this one or not. And from, from here we can uh, predict and we can use this information to see if there is specific, very specific errors in, in this genome uh, reference that will in influence everything uh, on this case, the genetic map and the recombination map. So, we were able to, 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 to go further and to identify um, these, uh, the, these problems. And the, the, the final result over here was, yeah, we clearly saw uh, some problems. And we, if we scaffold with this data, with IC data, there is a loss of, uh, let's say, continuity in the reference genome. However, uh, the, and w of course we, we, we lost a little bit of uh, N50, uh, but not too much. And so we are standing still for the chromosome uh, assembly level. All, however, we lost uh, like some, a big part of the genome that we are not able to put together. Uh, however, it seems like, like this order is much more close to the reality uh, that we are getting with, with the optical maps. And uh, we spent quite a time on, on this because this is really important for future um, specific uh, genome evolution studies uh, that we want to do uh, across the whole Phoenix genome. And uh, like here, I really present what we get right now in terms of organization of the genome and uh, what is uh, the importance of, in this case, to, to go through this uh, very, uh, very deep detailed uh, analysis to start, which we really wanted to, and we are now able to, to go further and to, to, to start for the first time, uh, let's say, uh, a broad analysis of the phoenix species and what is happening in terms of uh, evolution even in uh, date palm varieties that nothing is known so we do, in our we don't know at genomic level what is the difference between one variety let's say sucari and uh, barhi we don't really know so all this information that we are delivering in in the next uh, months as as publications uh, are, will be the basis for the molecular and genomic toolkit to understand what is the, the 
what is happening with the evolution of these iconic species and uh, also hopefully to improve uh, breeding techniques and to make use of this information for the future. I want to thank you uh, to my group, of, uh, mostly to give me the opportunity to, to perform this, this, uh, this work, mostly to Jonathan, uh, Sylvie, Ferrer, uh, Sylvie that is here present in Muriel, and also our collaborators, collaborators namely Khaled, which is here also, our collaborators in the uh, US Department of Ag Agriculture, Robert Kruger, and of course, to the head of the group, Michael Perugan. And with this, thank you. Thank you.